Hello. What's going on? Hey, how are you? Thank you for doing this. This is so cool. Yeah, no problem. Should I? I don't know. I do. I'm. I'm just gonna leave it like this. I think. Cool. Thank. Thank you so much. I know you're so busy. This is cool. Yeah. Sorry about. Sorry it took me so long. No, it's no, you're right on time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so cool that you even like responded because there's some guys that are like, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it, but then it's like they don't. Yeah. You know I mean? No. Yeah. I yeah. felt bad. I couldn't. Uh, I know. Do it tonight because I forgot I had class from six to nine. So you have class from six to nine. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's some stats class i i'm in my master's program so Yo, classes nice. are three hours yeah dang okay that's cool yeah. but okay so to start it off we've been watching you since we were like sophomores or yeah juniors in high school so it's pretty cool to talk to nice. you yeah, so cool. yeah awesome. so yeah we just kind of to start it off we're just going to ask some like general questions so like what being like the number one like ranked player in oregon coming out of high school what was it that kind of made you pick Oregon State to come to and like wh- how, what role did like Wayne Tinkle play in yeah I mean honestly Oregon State wasn't my first option most mm-hmm. of the time I was really uh, like I took a lot of visits to like Harvard and Princeton just because uh, you know they were, were super good schools and I felt like I'd be stupid to not at least look at those type of schools mm-hmm. but uh, UC Irvine was actually like my number one like option honestly right before the uh like my my de- my decision date at uc irvine was my last visit and i was actually like told my parents like when i got home it was like i was going like committing there really? so i really had my mind so yeah mindset in uc irvine but after like you come home for a visit you kind of gotta let things sink in because you're kind of on that high from you know visiting a place like that and then when s- things sunk in i was just like you know being from oregon it would have been uh you know i guess i'm gonna say hard but you know different for me to move away from home and i thought it'd be super cool to play in uh in the same state where he grew up in and kind of be mm-hmm. like that you know hometown kid but yeah coach single is obviously like a big part and you know the culture we have here or in state now obviously i know a lot about it because i'm going to my fourth year mm-hmm. but now i can see like the culture he developed the family orientation how much they care about each other the uh the standards they hold you to you know it's all a very very classy high class carry yourself with class and so I, and obviously, um, the way I thought they could develop me into, you know, the player I want to be the person I want to be. And then actually, so obviously I, well, I wouldn't change a thing about my decision. So and there's so mm-hmm. many different factors that, uh, go into making a college decision, but yeah, he was right. obviously a huge part. Yeah. No. Yeah, for sure. And it's especially cool that like definitely easier travel for family and stuff. Yeah, for sure. That's a big part. Like I have a huge like most of my family comes to every single, I don't know how it's going to be this year. Right. I don't yeah. even, I don't even, don't even know our schedule this year yet, but right. uh, yeah, I have a huge family base and that's super, that's a super cool thing about playing in Oregon is that they literally only an hour away. So like they're at every single game. So. Did, did you grow up more of a beaver or a duck? Uh, honestly, I tell everyone it's usually like both, which it kind of yeah. was, but when it, uh, honestly, more duck probably than anything yeah uh in terms of like football like i mm. started getting into college yeah obviously football <laughs> but or earlier on but uh um when i was i didn't really get into college basketball till like eighth grade so when i started paying attention to stuff that's so yeah yeah for sure definitely jonah goes to oregon so yeah <laughs> i get he oh. lives in corvallis and he sports okay. on oregon gear now so he's definitely oh, wow. making Grew up it. a beaver there yeah, he's making the <laughs> transition for sure. But nice. yeah. yeah, so Dylan's more your kind of guy though, because he's a huge duck football fan, but the <laughs> yeah. biggest Oregon State baseball fan here ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so who would you say has kind of made like the biggest um impact like coaching wise and also player wise? Like who did you really look to as you came in as a freshman and were new? Yeah. Player? Um, like as a freshman, obviously it's probably pretty obvious trace. Mm-hmm. was one I really looked to. Um, I know like our games were different. He's taller and bigger than me, but our games were similar at the same time. And we're actually extremely similar as people, people like it, it's actually insane. If you get to know like me and Trace, we're pretty similar just like as people go. So just, he was kind of the biggest one as a player and seeing how hard like the kid works. But he doesn't get enough credit for how hard he works. It's mm-hmm. insane how hard that guy actually works. And I think after my sophomore year, you know, after I wasn't really playing that much, which is, you know, obviously 
given since we had Stevie Trace and you know, obviously that was hard for me through that whole thing, but I kind of just took it upon myself just to work super hard just from seeing the hard work he put in and kind of give you know co- coaches no excuse not to play me. Um, but yeah, he was definitely probably the number one person I seen. Uh, I kind of followed, wanted to follow, saw how hard he worked. And then coaching wise, it's kind of tough. Uh, obviously all the coaches have a different impact to you in a similar way, but I'd mm-hmm. say, um, coach Thompson's one of them. Uh, Ethan yeah. and I obviously like live together our freshman year. So like, obviously I see coach Thompson as a coach, but I see him more as a friend and I can, I, him and I, I can talk to him, him about anything. So I'd say I'm super close to him, but also coach Rupp. Coach Rupp is a super cool guy, and obviously he has a super – or a lot, of, a lot of experience, was in the NBA for the longest amount of time. Carl Malone's like his best friend, so he's seeing the best of them. So I'd say probably aside from all of them, if I had to pick two, is probably those two. Yeah, that's awesome. So how cool is it, Ben, kind of transitioning from being a young guy and now you're like a solidified starter and you have yeah. to act as more of the leader now? Yeah, um, it's something – that's yeah, why I actually got asked that question yesterday by someone. Oh, really? um, yeah, but it's so it's a it's a role I haven't had to take on necessarily in my first three years here because we had Trace, you know, we had mm-hmm. Drew, we had Kyler. I mean, Coach asked me, you know, last year to be more vo- a more vocal leader, um, but obviously, like Trace was our guy, and yeah. not everything, you know, I can be vocal leader and be positive, but not everything I say, you know, young guys are going to listen to, you know, they're going to want to listen to Trace. But now that I am in that position, I think I'm you know, very well suited for it. It was something I went through all of high school. So I was a very vocal leader, competitive guy in high school. So it's not like I'm not used to being in that position. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm very comfortable in that position. I'm okay with calling guys out if they need to be, but I'm also see my, my leadership aspect. I'd see it say it's more of a, you know, pick guys up, get them going, um, help them out. if They don't know anything. Um, Obviously get on when they need to, but I'd say that's, you know, not not very often but it's a position i was put in high school you know basically all four years like since i came in as a freshman so something i'm used to is it weird like coming in because obviously you were like such like an accomplished like high school basketball player and then Uh you're coming into a new system is it sometimes hard to like balance like knowing the fact that you're coming into a new situation where there's already solidified guys and you just came to a spot where you're like I'm like the, I was the dude, you know? Yeah. Oh, I mean, every single college basketball player experienced that at one Mm -hmm. point or another, like every single one. And that's something that was super hard for me in the first two years to understand that I felt like I was skilled enough and I was good enough, you know, to take some guys spots, but I didn't understand at that young age, I just wasn't mature. And now that I am older and I'm a third, you know, third or second, you know, year starter really. And you know, senior leader on the team, I complete like I completely understand why it wasn't that way when I was younger. Like it's crazy. It's just the experience I've had and being in a new system and you know, there's so many different factors that go in. Like I now understand why like I didn't play. I was like, oh yeah, I was just I was a dumb, stupid teenager, you know, complaining, mm-hmm. crying, crying sometimes after games, just like <laughs> why am I not, you know, playing? But now that I'm older, I completely understand. And you know, it's, it's tough. I mean, when you, I mean, everyone on your team was the best player in high school. And when yeah. you come into, you know, a college team, um, you know, and you're not playing, you question yourself a lot and you go through sleepless nights and you just don't understand what's going on. But yeah, now that I'm older, I completely understand. hundred percent. What's it kind of like too? Cause like, obviously your basketball squads, they're not like the biggest team and like uh-huh. you're close with everybody. So like, what's mm-hmm. it like kind of folk, like balancing, um, like competition because you obviously want to get in the starting five you want that role yeah like what's it kind of like battling with those guys that you're also close to like off the court yeah i mean honestly on the court and on the court's completely Mm -hmm. different from each other i'll you know go at ethan and all these other guys on the court all the time and we'll talk you know mess to each other all (laughs) practice when you step off we're cool i mean yeah i'd say the guy right now gianni and i probably (laughs) jared and i probably go at it a lot i remember last year Jared and I went at it all the time, but we were cool off the court. That's awesome. um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely just a fine line. You just have to know, I mean, all athletes I'm sure can uh, understand that at some point or another. It's like, we know, whether it's a football field, you know, baseball field, basketball court or whatever, uh, it's all business when you step on, but when you're off, you know, you should be cool. There are the few occasions where <laughs> it does carry off the court, 
but uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So like your guys' season, you had a good season and it was full of like highs and lows, lots of close yeah. games. What did you kind of do to stay focused? And also since you were like a junior last year, what did you do to help younger guys kind of stay motivated and like want to like persevere through the tough times? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we had a pretty good season. We went through just that rough patch in the middle of Pac-12 mm-hmm. last year. Yeah. Um, the few rough games, but you know, it's tough. You just kind of honestly, you just got to take, take care of all your responsibilities for, you know, to me, that's how you stay focused the most. Um, and it starts off the court, honestly, like if you don't take care of your responsibilities off the court, that's going to affect you on the court. If you're not doing well in school, it's going to affect you on the court. So that's, I think the number one is that, you know, kind of being a good person in the community, um, getting your schoolwork done, all of those other factors really translate to on the court. And, you know, it's, you know, younger guys, they don't understand. They'll go through highs and lows, but you just mm-hmm. got to set a, set a good example. And they're having a tough time help them out. And that's honestly how I, you know, stay focused. Oh. So. Nope. Don't want <laughs> to do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh good. no. Come on. My buddy just called me. Something that's probably happened. Good. My bad. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about one of the main things I kind of wanted to ask you about was, uh, like, cause you guys were so hot coming into like the, no. Oh my <laughs> God. This is so dumb, good. bro. I'm so sorry. Oh my no, God. Dude, it's all good. I don't care. All right. So like the Oregon game mm-hmm. and like you guys were so hot coming into that, you know, um, what, like, what was kind of like the message and like, how did you guys end up finding out and kind of what did like coach Tinkle tell you guys? Is it like, the, how, how did you guys like absorb the, like, how did that whole situation go down? Cause it was super tough and I was really disappointed cause I was looking like really forward to that game. Oh, oh, you mean uh pack 12? Oh, yeah. yeah. Pack 12. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I was actually, we, I was like in uniform. We were leaving in like 20, 30 minutes, um, ready for the game. And honestly, like it was super disappointing because we thought we could have done something special. Like, right. Yeah. That's what you I'm know, saying. You just, you just, we were hot at the end of the year and we felt like, you know, we had a chance if we won three games, obviously four, you're guaranteed, but we thought if we got three games and we had a pretty good chance of getting a bid to the tournament. Right. Yeah. Um, it was hard. It was hard. Like it took a while to sink in. Uh, like we had really no idea like what was going on. We felt like right. we could have played and all that. But uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it was just, it was just shocking. Like we were all just like, wow, like our season just ended. Like, like it was just, it just felt weird. And it's nothing like any sports teams, probably like all sports teams, obviously in all aspects, and especially spring sports, like they didn't even have a season. Right. Yeah. Um, but like just the season ended just like that, literally with a phone call. So yeah, it was just honestly shocking. It took a few days to sink in. Yeah. Was there any talks, like, especially now, like, cause like what happens if, I'm I'm sure they're going to, cause they've obviously made like efforts to make the Pac-12 football season happen. So like mm-hmm. what happens if something goes wrong and basketball doesn't happen? Is there going to be like another kind of red shirt year? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do yeah. They talks have it? It. Yeah. They, so for all athletes, like if you don't feel comfortable playing, you're allowed to opt out of the season and oh, okay. your scholarship, your scholarship stays and your eligibility stays. Um, to the extent of the NCAA, I mean, obviously right now we're set to start November 25th and tomorrow actually is the start of our season. So like practicing six days oh, a week right and all on. that. Yeah. Um, but as far as like the NCAA goes, I'm sure if, if they ended up canceling the season, I can't see them doing that now mm-hmm. with all the protocols we put in, they put in and us getting tested every day to be able to play and all that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they would give everyone an extra year, but I just can't see them canceling it. So do you kind of want, I was going to ask, do you kind of want to talk about that? Like what is kind of, like you said, the protocols, what is everything that mm-hmm. like set in place and like, do they already have kind of a, um, like a system in place for like when the season starts, like what's um, going to happen? Like you're going to be testing every day, like before practices and games and just everything. Yeah. So like, as of right now, we've been testing every single day to be able to do contact. Um, oh, so yeah. like. So, you know, tomorrow I'll go in and get my test. As far as the um, season, I mean, I'd assume they'd keep the same mm-hmm. the same protocols. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, there's just so many different things, which each state and each county. So I honestly really don't know. All I, yeah. all I can really say is that, like, right now for us to be able to practice, we, 
they get tested every day to be able to do contact and that's it. So they, I mean, we don't even have a schedule yet for the season. So, right. Yeah. What was, yeah. um, what was kind of like your off season training? Like, cause I'm sure it's kind of hard. Cause it was like, we're, we're most, yeah. most gyms are pretty much close. Huh? Is there like a yeah. specific guy you work with? Um, or? not really. So, I mean, obviously during like the whole quarantine, my garage was my gym Nice. and like, I put on like 10 pounds it was about six pounds of muscle, but I got up to like 215 just nice. by working out my gym. Like it was all like body weight stuff too. So that's why I was like super shocked at like how much muscle I put on. Cause I wasn't really like lifting weights. I mean, I had weights, but they only went up to, you know, like 50, 60 pounds. Yeah. So it's not like it's that much. Um, just like all body weight stuff in the garage and then, um, ball handling in my garage. Cause even in Wilsonville, with all the connections I have in Wilsonville and all the gyms, I was not even able to get in like one gym. Yeah. That's tough. Um, yeah. So honestly, it was just like shooting outside. And, you know, there were times where like I wouldn't be able to shoot for, you know, two weeks or something like that just because of, of the weather or, you know, parks we were going to, they ended up blocking the rims and all that. Mm. Um, so you know, that was tough. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just honestly working out in my garage and uh, doing ball handling where I can. That's kind of what it was. And then obviously, once I got back and in the middle of May, uh, in the middle of end of April, I ended up finding a gym and doing a whole bunch of training. And then we, my little brother and I have a, like a trainer at the gym we go to who's awesome. We actually met him this off season. He's been helping us out a lot. So that's awesome. So like, is it hard sometimes? Like, well, obviously you guys are expecting a season, but it's hard to stay focused. Like, or like, cause I don't know. I feel like it would be sometimes hard when there's not a set schedule. Cause like, do you yeah. guys ever like, cause you're like, Ooh, we might have to play this specific team. Like how much planning in advance goes into your practices? Like before the season, like in preseason, you mean in terms of like sky report or just yeah. practicing kind of both. Um, both. Yeah. I mean, just practicing obviously right now, with all the lost time we had over the summer and not being able to do contact like most teams they are trying to get the new guys acclimated and them put into the system. So it's a little different. And, you know, scouting report that all that stuff, that's usually just the week of week of mm -hmm. the game. I mean, oh, the coaches, right. are, coaches will obviously do that many, many days or weeks in advance, but in terms of scouting report, it's, you know, uh, like the week of the game. For sure. So like, do you kind of want to give a little bit of a preview of your team? Because like you're losing, you're losing Kyler. Yeah. And then Trace. And, you, and there's some new guys. Like Jared Lucas was big last year. Do you want to mm -hmm. kind of give a preview of like your team? And because there was a few transfers too, right? Uh yeah. So we have I think it's six, five or six new guys, one freshman. Uh all the others are junior college transfers. So obviously I'd say the main guys returning from last year, our lineup is me, Ethan, Alfred, mm -hmm. Jared, Gianni. Uh, Roman Silva, uh, Joey Potts, who was a red shirt last year. He transferred, but was a red shirt. Um, I think, oh, Julian Franklin, who was a red shirt last year as well. De'Aaron Tucker. Um, and then, so new guys are Maurice, who's like 6'8". Uh, Warith, who's a transfer from Nickel State. Um, Rodrigue, who's a big man. We have Isaiah Johnson, who's a f the only freshman. I feel like I'm known for getting someone else. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking out. Here, let me let me let me look at my roster real quick. I don't know why I'm blanking out. It's okay. It's chill. Like, were you pretty? Uh, um, like y Ethan's coming back. So, like, were you? What did you kind of have like insight that he was, or kind of were you surprised? At and yeah, no, I mean, I knew he was yeah. kind of going to, um, it was smart of him to declare though. Yeah. Cause if he, if he was, uh, you know, obviously everything got messed up with workouts stuff for the NBA draft, but if they were able to have workouts, he would have been mm -hmm. able to like go. So it was smart of him to put his name in if he was, if he was able to go. No, hundred percent. Do you, yeah. um, I, I, this was one of the questions that I kind of wanted to ask, like it's, um, what did you think about like the civil war name changing and like, did um, you know anybody that actually like personally had a problem with it? Uh, no. Yeah. I was, I was kind of shocked. I mean, I think especially growing up in Oregon, I, yeah, I've always called it that. Right. Um, 
Yeah, honestly, I didn't really like pay too much attention to yeah. that. I guess it just it is what it is. Um, I'm sure a lot of people keep the keep the tra- keep the traditional name to no, it, yeah. but uh, what, whatever they want to do with it, they is it's you know it'll, it'll mean the same thing. We're playing Oregon; it's a big game, so right. Hundred percent. Always, always, always looking forward to that. Is Oregon basically like? Is that what you, you those two games kind of what you look forward to most season? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, they're fun games to play in, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to focus on winning as many games as possible. So, 100%. Um, um, I was a little bummed because we had a pretty good preseason lined up this year uh, to play some pretty good teams. So, we'll see if we'll be able to get some of those games back, but we have yet to see that. Tons of close games. So, like Jonah, he's a big basketball guy, (laughs) big Mm -hmm. Reichel fan. So, do you Mm -hmm. kind of want to ask some of your questions, Joe? Yeah. So, I did have a few questions. So obviously growing up in Corvallis, I pretty much saw every game from your freshman and sophomore year. Uh-huh. And so I was really like impressed when I went back and watched the film from your junior season. You evolved a lot just this year. Like, yeah. This was definitely a breakout year for you, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I was just most, talk me through like how your offensive game specifically changed because your freshman and sophomore year, you were like pretty much just a strict spot up shooter and like, mm-hmm you really like changed to the way you played, like even like attacking closeouts or getting more yeah. shots this year. Yeah. I'd say, yeah. So first two years, I'd say the biggest thing was just getting adjusted to the speed of the game. Um, obviously freshman year, that was a lot, but also a lot, you know, a lot of the offense, it, it's uh, your role on the team. Um, so a lot of people don't see, you know, I mean, I, I understand if you're not really, really on the inside, you don't see, but, yeah, my freshman sophomore year, we had you know we had Stevie, we had Drew, we had Trace, we had Kyler, so I wasn't really needed to be a scorer, even though I had more to my game. And that's sometimes like we were talking about earlier, the hard part coming from high school into a new system. You you have, I mean, the older you, or the higher level you get, you kind of, you got to pick and choose your spots and pick and choose what you need to do really good at. So in high school, obviously, I could do whatever I wanted. Um, at any at any point in time but when, once you get to the higher level you have to really perfect a certain skill so my first two years um yeah i'd say i was just a spot up shooter but i was really trying like I, even though i was so much more like a lot of people see you know see me as just a shooter but i see myself as an all-around player and i actually think my you know my passing in in my game is as good as my shooting that's one thing that people you know don't kind of understand too much about me is that I'm as much of a passer as I am a shooter. I just wasn't, you know, put in the position to do that as much my freshman and sophomore year because I was getting acclimated to the, the speed of the game and just my role on the team in general. Yeah, um, sure. So in the Pac-12 and assists, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I have honestly, I have no idea. I don't, I don't really look at, <laughs> I don't really look at my stats. Um, but yeah, I mean, Last year obviously was, you know, a big year, a lot more confident. I'd say I lost my confidence a lot in the first two years just because it was just, you know, new system. I was down on myself and like, why am I not shooting well? Why am I not playing? Why am I not, you know, getting the, you know, getting the ball? It was a lot of um, me, me, me in some sort of way, even though I'm a very team, I'm a very selfless, very, you know, team oriented person. And I think I just lost my confidence those first two years and then working hard in the off season and, uh, getting prepared for the season is what gave me confidence. You know, confidence comes from preparing very well. Um, and so I think that was just a big thing for me. And then like, as a guy, like for a pack 12 shooting guard, you've got a decent amount of size, like six, five, like uh-huh. two twenty. I've noticed like, especially with Ethan being sort of an oversized point guard, you'll uh-huh. a lot of times get a like matchup. Who's a lot smaller than you. Like you've even been yeah. guarded by like some five, 10, six foot guys. How does that like change your mindset going into a game when you know you'll have a big physical advantage or something? Yeah, obviously, like, yeah, if I have a, you know, big advantage, I'm going to try to attack the rim and get to the bucket or post them up. I think a good example of that was, uh, I think it might have been Portland State, the Portland State game. Um, I shot one three, I think, and all my points were just at the rim. Um, So obviously just watching film, obviously shooting will be – you know, but the number one thing that's probably on other guys' scouting reports, um, run me off the line, don't help off me, all that. But, you know, watching film on offense, you also got to understand where to pick and choose your spots that game and where the advantage will be. So, obviously, depending on what team you have on a certain day, um, will change how you play offense because you take what the defense gives you. So, Like you were saying, too, um, 
in your first two years where you didn't necessarily feel like you got to utilize or show off your like full skill set? Are there still some things that you have that you keep under wraps that you that you think you could build on for next year? Um, I'd say so. Uh, you know, my for me, it doesn't. Uh, how do I want to put this without sounding like an idiot? Um, because I I understand that I had more to my game my first two years, but um, I'm all you know all about team, all about winning. So for me, I'll do whatever the team needs me to do to win. If that's shoot, let's shoot. If it's pass, it's pass. So it's okay that. It's okay that I wasn't able to do that because everyone has something in their game that they're not able to show off at a certain point in time because the priority at hand is to win and, you know, do whatever the coaches need you to do to win. So I don't want to come off as an arrogant person because I'm not, and I understand that. I mean, I'd say so. I mean, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I'm in a you know bigger role this year, scoring and handling the ball and being a leader on the team. Um, I'm sure, obviously, I'll, some people will see that something new to my game that, you know, I've put in, you know, the past couple of years being in the position I am. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Have you talked to the coaching staff at all about how your responsibilities are going to change with Trace being gone and everything? Um, Honestly, I mean, a li- not really. Um, You know, obviously we'll see, and we haven't practiced too much yet. So, you know, roles haven't quite been defined there, but I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, take on that role and I'm obviously more than happy to, and I'm sure it's expected of me, um, from them, but it hasn't really distinctly been said. Um, you know, everyone's role will be defined and everyone will know their role, um, as the, as, you know, as we keep practicing in these next, you know, six weeks or something like that. Um, so no, it hasn't, it hasn't really been spoken. Um, I guess kind of assumed in a way, because I know they expect a lot of me and I know they expect a lot of me last year and they expect more this year. Um, but I'm sure that my role will be more defined, uh, as we keep practicing more. And then last question for me, I guess, is there an NBA player or a guy in the league right now who you did, who you would compare your game to? Um, man, I, I don't really know. Uh, my favorite player of all time is Larry Bird, but obviously <laughs> I wasn't allowed to see that. I grew up watching just highlights of him and stuff. Um, Right now, I'm not. I'm not you too like sure. Teddy Osman. Uh uh-uh. uh No, I know Ingles from. I know maybe like uh, Ingles from the Jazz or maybe something like that. I don't know. You know, not super athletic, but can shoot and create and kind of do everything. But no, I haven't really. I try not to really uh, compare compare myself to others. I kind of just want to be the best me I can possible. So obviously, I watch clips from a variety of different people and maybe try to add that to my game, but not, not one single person. Like what are, who are some guys that you watch quite a bit? Uh, obviously JJ Redick and running off screens, his catch and shoot. Obviously the most recent is probably Duncan Robinson. Uh, obviously I really didn't know too much of who he was yeah. beforehand. Um, but the whole world knows now, and he's one heck of a shooter. Clay Thompson, obviously, and how he's always on balance um, watching I guess some Chris Paul highlights to see how they create and all that type of stuff. So just different types of players who do a lot of different things. Great. So you try to add a little bit to your game. hundred percent. What are your kind of your plans like after this season? Um, that's, I guess that's a big question. Yeah. Uh, I have, I really have, I have no idea. Um, if the opportunity presents itself to play after, obviously I will look at that, but, um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, that I could do, I guess, um, you know, maybe a grad assistant, maybe go play. Obviously I'm, I'm going to have my, uh, my master's at the end of next fall. So that's just, that's, that's a big decision that I'm just, you know, um, winning to decide on. I don't know. I don't really know how, I guess that's the kind of the scary part uh, is mm-hmm. I don't know what, what the next eight months of my life is going to look like. No, so I'm just kind of going with it, working on school. Uh, focus on you know having the best season we can for our team this year and hopefully having lots of uh, team success uh, no matter no matter my role so that's just kind of what I'm focused on yeah so like what are your kind of your individual goals because you're coming off like your is it your your best year at Oregon State yeah I mean like points wise yeah Yeah, what yeah and so what are your kind of your individual goals and obviously team goals um honestly for me 
I don't set too many individual goals at mm. all. I just, for me, I just set team goals and with team success comes individual success. So whatever individual success I have, you know, from us winning, um, is fine with me. It's just icing on the cake. I'm, I'm super team oriented guy and doing anything I can to help us win. Um, I mean, it was, honestly, it was the same in high It was the same way in high school. I mean, yes, I had those individual goals in the back of my mind, like my senior year to get Gatorade play of the year and all, all right. that. But honestly, that all came because we were winning and we were doing whatever we could uh, to win that year. So I'm never focused on, you know, me, 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 really. I just really focus on our team and, you know, doing what I can to help everyone get better around us and what we can do to be the best team possible. Because, and when you have a team full of guys who are unselfish and want to do everything they can to win, I mean, the sky's the limit for that. So that's kind of my, my, my goal this year. I know hundred percent. You've played with so many good players. Like you've played with, like you guys have had so many good big men, like Drew Banks and then like Kyler. And then obviously like Steven Thompson and stuff. Yeah. Joe, do you have like any other questions you want to ask? No, I asked all of mine. Yeah. So thank you so much for doing this. This is so Yeah, no problem. It's kind of hard because like there's no like specific schedule or like really anything. And I know like thank you for actually like responding and like no problem. This is super cool. It's always cool to like know other guys because it's like we go to like the same school, you know, but it's like yeah. it's so big that you really don't get to know anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Especially no, now it, for sure. But yeah. Exactly. I mean, I have a bunch of people from my high school go here who I haven't seen in like four mm-hmm. years. So yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. It's super yeah, cool. no problem. Hopefully, yeah, I get to see you guys around Corvallis here sometime when it's yeah, for sure. Hopefully we get to go to a some... game. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> that'd, that'd pro- cool. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully after yeah, the new cool. year. Yeah. Thank so. you so much. All right, guys. I'll uh, I'll see you guys later. All right. Sounds good. All right. See ya.